let's get started. This whole section is on um, finding what makes a rational expression undefined. And a rational expression is just a fancy way to say <clears throat> fraction. So when we're talking about fractions, remember if there's an X in the denominator, there are going to be values or more, more than one value, a value or more than one value that'll make that, that fraction undefined, which in turn means we need to leave those numbers out of the domain, okay? So the first two are going to say, find the number or numbers for which the rational expression is not defined. So on number one, you've got 8b squared minus 13 over 13b plus 20. So what we need to do to find what's going to make these undefined is you don't care about the numerator. You need to say, okay, since there is a variable in the denominator, there is going to be a number that will make this undefined. So you just set whatever the denominator is equal to zero and solve it. So in this one to solve, I'm just getting B by itself. So I would subtract the 20 from both sides. So I would have 13 B equals negative 20. And then divide by the 13. So B, whoops, B equals negative 20 over 13. So on this one, the way it's asking, it's saying uh, <clears throat> find the numbers for which the rational expression is not defined. So the rational expression, this is why it's this one, it's not defined for B equals negative 20 over 13. When we get down to the ones where it's asking for the domain, that's when you are going to pick the one that says X is a real number and X cannot equal whatever the answers are. So that's why there's a little bit of difference. This, the first two are just finding the numbers that would make <clears throat> the rational expression undefined. Once we get to number three, we're gonna start listing the domain. So that's gonna be the difference. Okay, let's look at number two. Z squared minus Z minus two. Over Z squared minus 12 Z plus 27. So here's my denominator. I don't care about that. I need to find what makes that equal to zero. This one is a Z squared, which tells me there's actually gonna be two values that will make this one undefined, okay? So I'm going to factor this to solve it. Since it is a trinom trinomial, Z and Z, are gonna give you the Z squared. Numbers that multiply to give me 27. So let's just think about the numbers that will do that first. So my options will be 27 and one and nine and three. So I have to come up with the pair, be careful with your sign. It's gonna give me negative 12. So in order to do that, you can tell that you're not gonna be able to use the 27 and one pair. I'm gonna to have to use this nine and three pair. In order for that to add to negative 12, they are gonna both have to be negative, right? So that's how nine and three add to negative 12 is if you give them both a negative symbol, which doesn't mess up the positive 27 because if you're multiplying these two numbers, they do equal a positive, right? Because a negative times a negative is positive 27. So the negatives are, are good to go. So minus nine, minus three, then set the factors equal to zero and solve them for Z. So add the nines here. So 
So Z equals nine. And here add the threes. So Z also equals three. So nine and three are the numbers, the values that would make this rational expression undefined. Now, could I have made this easier on myself? If I, anytime you're solving a squared equation, you can use the quad program, right? That's a, it doesn't matter. There's several different areas that we're going to be solving squared equations in this class. You can always use the quad program for that by going to program down to quad. Type in your A, B, and C. So A would be would have been one. B would have been negative 12 and C would have been 27. And there's the nine and three. Okay, so anytime you are solving a squared equation, there is not a reason why you shouldn't just use your quad program. Now, when we get to number three, now it's gonna ask for the domain. So we're going to start, do the same process. So the function is f of x equals 6x minus 5 over x plus 5. So when we're finding the domain, we need to say, okay, my denominator cannot equal 0. So you're going to find what makes it equal to 0, just like what we've been doing. And since it's just an x, not an x squared, I don't need to go to quad. I just get the X by itself by subtracting the five. So X cannot equal negative five. So that is what is gonna go in this part. The X is a real number and X cannot equal negative five. It's also going to ask you to put this in interval notation. So remember, interval notation is all the parentheses stuff. So we want to show in interval notation all the numbers on the number line except negative five, which would be starting all the way to the left of the number line would be negative infinity all the way to negative five in union with negative five to positive infinity. So that includes everybody from negative infinity to positive infinity, except negative five. When you are typing this in, this symbol that goes in between the parentheses and the interval notation will be down in that little toolbox at the bottom of where you type in your answers, you know, where you hit the you type in a fraction or an exponent, okay? That'll be down there. And so will your infinities also. All right, number four. G of X equals six over three X minus X squared. So again, the denominator can't equal zero since it is a squared I'm going to use quad to find the two numbers that X cannot equal. <clears throat> so since they can't equal, I'm going to, before I put, get out my quad though, I'm gonna rearrange these terms, right? I want my squared term to be my first term. So I'm just gonna flip flop these so that, and move it with its sign. So I'm gonna move the X squared up front and then the plus three X behind it. So now when I'm doing my quad and need to know my A, B, and C, A is the number in front of X squared, which would be negative one. B is the number in front of X, which is positive three. And since there's not a constant, it will be zero. Okay. So going to quad, 
Type it in my A, B, and C, which is negative one, three, and zero. Those are your two solutions. Zero and three. So those are the numbers that X cannot equal interval notation. So now I need to say all the numbers on the number line except for zero and three. So let's see, all the numbers below zero would be negative infinity to zero in union with the numbers between zero and three are good. So that's how you would write that. All the numbers above three. So from three to infinity. Number five. F of X equals seven X squared minus 46 over five X plus 13. So again, it's just an X, not an X squared, which means Hang on, I'm right taking down the wrong real quick. There's only going to be one, one solution, one number that x cannot be. So just say, say that can't equal zero. Don't need to go to quad since it's not squared. I'm just getting x by itself. So I'll subtract the 13 from both sides. So 5x cannot equal negative 13. A divided by five. So X cannot equal negative 13 fifths. So X is a real number. It just can't equal negative 13 fifths. So if I show that in interval notation, again, from the bottom of the number line to negative 13 fifths, in union with, negative 13 fifths to positive infinity. All right, last one. So f of x equals x to the third minus x squared plus x plus one over x squared plus seven x plus six. So again, the denominator can equal zero. It's x squared, which means I'm going to have two solutions. Also means I can use my quad, right? So go to the quad program on your calculator. Type in your a, b, and c, which will be 1, 7, and 6. So those are the numbers that x cannot be, negative 6 and negative 1. Now, when you type this in on this answer, right, you're going to have two numbers that X cannot be, okay? Now, look what it says under here. Simplify your answers. They're not, so you don't have to simplify. Hang on. Where does it say it? Oh, use ascending order. And here's why it wants you to list them with your smallest number first and then your next number because that's how you're gonna have to do the order when you do interval notation, right? You'll have to do negative infinity two. If you're coming up from negative infinity, which number are you gonna run into first? Negative six, right? Because it's below 
negative one on the number line. So that's why I want you to enter them in that order when you're saying what X cannot equal, because now when you do interval notation, you'll do negative infinity. Again, the first number of these that you would run into on the number line will be negative six. Numbers between negative six and negative one. And all the numbers above negative one, which would be negative one to positive infinity. Okay. 